Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be making mashed potatoes. Now in this video I'm going to share with you every single secret I have learned over almost 50 years of cooking for making the perfect creamy pot of mashed potatoes. I know Thanksgiving's coming up and Christmas is right behind it and everybody uh, is gonna have mashed potatoes with that big family dinner. You can use any potato to make mashed potatoes. Um, I use a potato about this size for every person. Now it doesn't matter whether I'm just making dinner for a weeknight or um, for Thanksgiving I use a potato about this size and if you're doing it for Thanksgiving, people are not going to eat quite that much because there are so many other things that they can eat. But everybody's going to want seconds and you're going to want leftovers for them midnight um, refrigerator robbers that are visiting. So go ahead and do a potato per person. Now when you're peeling your potatoes, you want to make sure that you get all of the spots off. You don't want to leave any black spots at all. Well, one little spot of rotten potato uh, will spoil your whole pot of mashed potatoes. And it doesn't matter how many you're making, that bitter taste will just get in the whole pot. Um, the very best potatoes, if you want a creamy mashed potato, are russet potatoes. Now, um, red skin potatoes or Yukon Gold or something like that, they don't get as soft and they don't get as fluffy. And not everybody cares for the texture of those in a mashed potato. But if you use the russets, you can get a really fluffy, smooth, creamy potato. You also want to make sure if your potatoes have any green on them that you peel that all away. That green is caused from exposure to sunlight or fl fluorescent lights in the grocery store. Um, and that is very bitter. These have a little bit, but not very much. But you want to make sure you get that all off if it has any. It's not only very bitter, but it will actually, it's poison. And just a little of it will make your potatoes taste bitter. And it's not going to make anybody sick, but a lot of it will make you very, very sick. So peel that away, and you can see here, this one's got all kind of black spots on the end. Get that all off of there. And I don't worry about washing the potatoes before I peel them, because most of them have already been washed. Whether you grow them at home and you wash them and store them in a cool place, or you buy them in the grocery store, you've probably washed them before you get to this point. Um, and they will have a little dirt on them, but after I peel them, gosh, that one's got quite a few brown spots. I wash them really, really good a couple of times. Um, you don't want your potatoes to taste like dirt. All right. Now, it will dramatically speed up the cooking if you cut your potatoes up in chunks. And how big the chunks you cut them in is going to affect how long it takes to cook them. I kind of cube mine up about like I would for a pot roast or something, not too small. But if you're in a hurry, you can cut them up much smaller and they will cook much faster. Now I know a lot of folks um, do stuff like add chicken broth to their mashed potatoes, um, especially for holiday dinners to give them extra flavor. Well, I don't. If you want to put chicken broth in yours, go ahead, but that totally changes the flavor. They don't taste like potatoes anymore, they taste like chicken. And if you're going to be adding gravy to them, that kind of overdoes that flavor and you don't get the flavor of the potatoes at all. So the only thing that I put in my mashed potatoes is salt and pepper and that's to taste and I wait until they're cooked to add any salt. Um, that's because if you put the salt in them when you're cooking them, the flavor cooks away and then you end up having to add more salt after you get them cooked and it's just a lot of extra salt 
And really you have more flavor if you wait until the potatoes are cooked and then you add the salt and you add it to taste. And I put butter in them. Now the butter is also to taste and it depends on what you want. You can do anywhere from a half a tablespoon to a tablespoon of butter per potato this size. The more butter you add, the creamier it's going to be and the richer it's going to be. And it, while we're talking about creamy and rich, you can use any milk in your potatoes. You can use everything from skin milk all the way up to heavy cream. The heavy cream is going to have more flavor and it's going to be richer and you're going to be able to um, cream the potatoes more. If you use an electric mixer to cream them with, which a lot of people do at Thanksgiving, um, you can really whip them up and get some air in them and they're really light and really smooth. And if that's what you're looking for, you want to use heavy cream. Um, they are very good though with just skim milk. And for week nights when we're just having mashed potatoes with dinner, I always use skim milk. And I am using some heavy cream today. That's up to you. It's entirely what you're looking for. So any milk will work and how much milk you use is going to depend on the actual consistency that you're looking for. And it's going to depend on how much moisture is left in your potatoes after you boil them. And something else I always do just for easy cleanup, I always peel my potatoes on a plastic grocery bag because there's no mess now. This goes straight to the trash. I don't have to clean up the counter or anything. A good sharp pair of knife definitely helps. Um, if you don't have a pair of knife, if you're uh, new to homemaking, I would suggest a sharp paring knife as the absolute first tool you buy for your kitchen because it will make life so much easier. Okay, now we're going to take these over to the sink. Now, normally I would just rinse these off and hold my hand over them and drain them, but because I'm doing a video, I've got a colander here in the sink to drain them because I know I'll spill them. And if you're afraid of spilling them, you can certainly use a colander. Okay, now after I rinsed them about three times, um, I put enough water in the pot to cover all the potatoes and then have probably half an inch over the top of the potatoes. You don't want your potatoes sticking up out of the water because if they are, they won't get done. And you can start these on high and then turn them down once they start boiling. Now here's another trick. Uh, if you're going to be starting them on high and you are cooking Thanksgiving dinner and you're not going to be able to watch them, lay a wooden spoon across your pot. It will keep them from boiling over. Now if you're in a real big hurry, if you put a lid on your pot, they will cook faster, but you will have to watch them very closely because with a lid on the pot, they'll boil over and they make a really brown, nasty mess on your stove top. Now, Here's how you know they're done. First of all, the color changes, and you can probably see that color change from this raw potato to what I've got here in the pot. They almost look like you could see through them when they get done. Um, the other thing is, is that they will be absolutely soft. Whether you poke them with a spatula or a knife or a fork or whatever, you want them where they are soft. And the secret to getting creamy smooth mashed potatoes is cooking them until they are just absolutely falling apart tender. That's how you get mashed potatoes with no lumps. So once they're cooked and they're soft, fall apart when you touch them, and these do, um, let me see if I can show you a little bit better. Let's scoop one up out. Just with my finger they just bust. They are very very tender. That's what you want. You know they're done when they're at this point and you know you'll be able to get them smooth with no lumps. So we're going to take these over to the sink and drain all the liquid we can get out of them off of them. And again, you can use a colander or you can just use the lid on the pot. 
whatever you feel comfortable with. If you're making a great big pot, it's kind of hard to hold the lid on it. I would definitely get a colander out. Like if you're cooking 10 pounds of potatoes for a big Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, now once they're cooked, you want to put your butter in them while they're still hot. And if you want to make potatoes that will really show up everything else at Thanksgiving dinner, go ahead and use close to a tablespoon of butter per potato. I mean, that's going to give them a lot of flavor. Um, certainly a lot more flavor. Well, I think a lot better flavor than a canned chicken stock. Um, you're going to need a potato masher, a whisk, an electric mixer. What It, it kind of depends on the texture that you're looking for. If you use a potato masher, you're going to get something that's a little more natural. Um, maybe you might have a lump left in it. If you cook them this done, you're not going to have any lumps left, even with a potato masher. But they're not going to um, have that fluffy air in them. And I know there's going to be a lot of people comment and say that they leave some of the water in their potatoes. Well, I replace that moisture with the milk or the cream and the butter. And you can see, even draining all the water, all I've got in here is the butter and it's not even melted yet. And it's they're already pretty creamy, so you don't need to leave that potato water in there. And that's, you don't need that to thicken them, and you don't need it for flavor. Because it doesn't really have that much flavor. Okay, now the cream, I'm going to add slowly and kind of watch my texture. If you get too much, your mashed potatoes will be runny. And you should be able to scoop them out on a plate and they should kind of hold their shape. You don't, you want to be able to put a spoon in the middle of them and add some gravy to it. And you don't want your potatoes running all over your plate because they sure won't hold your gravy if your potatoes are, are running everywhere. Okay, that's still a little bit stiff. Um, instead of, they're binding together and they're starting to look like mashed potatoes, but they're not really smooth. So I'm going to add a little more milk. You want to be careful with this. I said you don't want to overdo it because you don't want your potatoes running. They won't hold the gravy if they run across the plate by themselves. Alright, that's about what I want. And I'm just going to use a whisk. Now you could use that potato masher and nothing else. Or you could get out your electric mixer and you could use your electric mixer. Okay, I'm going to add my salt and my pepper. With this many potatoes, um, I'm going to start with a little more than a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Uh, kind of be careful because once you put it in, you can't take it out. And like I said, you can taste it and add more. And I would allow um, a little so that people that didn't like a ton of salt could add some on the table. Okay, and you can see when I first started using the whisk and I took the whisk in here and I whisked around all the potatoes stuck in my whisk and they went up the sides of my pan. Well, they're not doing that quite as bad now. They're going through the whisk and some of them are staying in the bottom of the pan. That's because they're getting a little air in them. And you can keep beating them until they get fluffier and fluffier and fluffier until you get exactly what you want for Thanksgiving. For presentation's sake, you want to have kind of a pretty bowl maybe to put them in and fold them all out in that bowl. You can see how nice and smooth they are, and they're pretty fluffy just with the whisk. If you use the electric mixer, like I said, they would be even fluffier and even lighter. And with heavy cream and plenty of butter, they're going to steal the, all the attention at dinner. 
they're really going to be good enough to make a meal out of all by themselves. Mashed potatoes do heat up fairly well, um, and you want to serve them really, really hot. But when you sit them on the table, put a little bit of butter right there in the center, and it'll kind of melt and run down over those potatoes, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and it really looks appetizing with the butter drizzling down through the potatoes. If you're going to make them ahead of time, maybe, and re because you're taking them to somebody else's house, and then you want to be able to reheat them, add a little bit of milk to them or a little bit of butter to them when you reheat them. That'll keep them from getting dry, and it'll keep them fluffy and creamy. I know a lot of my seasoned cooks, you already know how to make this, but there's a whole generation of young people out there who grew up without anybody in the kitchen cooking and this is something that they really don't know how to do because they have never seen anybody do it and I know that because I worked with quite a few of them uh, when I was at yesteryear I couldn't believe you know that this is something that people just aren't being exposed to anymore so I hope this helped if you're one of those young people who is trying to learn how to cook maybe you're doing your first thanksgiving dinner and you're having people over this really will work it really is easy just make sure you cook them done and like i said you can beat them up with a potato masher you can beat them up with a whisk you can beat them up with a hand mixer whatever you got you don't really need anything special and i hope you all have a very happy thanksgiving and i want to leave you with some words of wisdom from james my beloved brethren let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. When you go to these family get-togethers, sometimes it's better to listen than it is to speak. And if you do get angry, make sure you apologize before you leave because that anger from those silly little words at family get-togethers can turn into bitterness and hatred that can last for years and keep you separated from your loved ones over literally nothing, a few silly words at a get-together that was supposed to be a time of joy. So don't let those words make you angry. In Ephesians it says, be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. That means apologize before you leave so that that anger doesn't build and it doesn't fester and it doesn't turn into hatred and it doesn't separate you from those people that you love. It just isn't worth it over a few silly words. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. And we'll be back right after Thanksgiving with lots more videos. Thanks so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you haven't already, please click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.